Hello, my name is Aline Smaayin. I'm eight years old in third grade in Al Muwaqqaf School. We're staying home due to the coronavirus and you can benefit of your time of staying home, learning new things and reading more or playing some music. As for me, I love learning about space and ab- and uh, astronomy. So today we are going to talk about the solar system. So let's begin. The solar system is consists of the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, which doesn't show. And it also consists of the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt, which shows faintly here. And the dwarf planets are not shown here, but four of them orbit in the Kuiper belt, and one of them in the asteroid belt. Of course, six of these eight planets have moons. Mercury and Venus do not. The Sun. The Sun is is our local star, star of sources, of course. And it is not only and it is not the only star which has a solar system. So the Sun was born when a gas cloud collapsed to form rings of gas and dust. rings and in the middle a nuclear furnace fired up and the sun was born. Now the sun is made of mostly mostly hydrogen and helium and a bit of other elements. If you slice open the sun you can see two things. First one is the layers of the sun. The solar core, the radioactive layer, the photosphere, the chromosphere, the corona and the solar wind. Of course the solar wind is made out of high energetic particles that it emitted from the sun. And the second thing you can see if you slice open the sun, you can see the path of energy we call sunlight from the core to the chromosphere. It takes one million years for it to travel, but it takes only eight minutes for this energy, for this energy sunlight to to travel to Earth, eight minutes only. Now this is, you can see the sunspots from here. The sunspots are made when the, when the solar, when the magnetic field sun gets tangled because it spins fast, because it spins faster at its equator than at its poles. So these twisted magnetic field lines burst out of the sun. That's how the sun spots form. Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun and the smallest planet. Its color is gray due to due to rocks in the dust or the surface or on the surface. Now its temperature is very hot in the middle of the day, very cold in the middle of the night. And its atmosphere is is very thin. That's why its temperature. That's why its temperature is low. Basically, the atmosphere lets heat escape very quickly because heat is absorbed when in Mercury's day. At night, the heat escapes, making it cold. Thin. Now, Mercury has craters. Loads of craters. Of course, craters are made when when asteroids and meteoroids crash, crash into a planet. Of course, most of them evaporate in the Earth's atmosphere, so they protect us. But because Mercury has a little bit of atmosphere, it does nothing protects it from meteoroids and asteroids. And also, some craters within craters have also been discovered. Venus. Venus is, is the hottest planet and the second planet from the Sun. Its temperature is 800 degrees Celsius and this temperature is really high because of Venus's thick atmosphere which doesn't let heat escape. And now Venus has little or no magnetic field because it has no outer core. Now it has volcanoes, it has volcanoes, a lot of them of course. 
Most of them are pancake-shaped domes crushed by Venus's thick atmosphere. And it has rain. Venus has rain. But not liquid water rain. Sulfuric acid rain. Which comes from clouds in Venus's atmosphere. Now, its length of day is longer than its year. So a day is longer than a year. Earth. Earth is the third planet from the sun and the planet we live on. Its temperature, the average temperature, is about 16 degrees Celsius. And this is because of Earth's atmosphere. Of course, the atmosphere isn't thick, but it's thick enough. I mean, not so thick. It rotates in 24 hours. And day and night would have been the same length of Earth's axis, axis when tilted about 23.5 degrees. And now Earth has a name, water day, of course. And, and it is 75% water, about it. And now it's unique because of its many, many life forms. It's the only planet we know in the universe which has life. And Earth has one moon, the moon. The moon's name is Luna. First steps on, on the moon were made by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Of course, Neil Armstrong went on the moon first, then Buzz Aldrin followed him. The moon's gravity is one sixth of Earth. And this means you can jump six times higher and you feel six times lighter. And the moon's orbit takes about a month. And it also takes a month to spin on its axis once, which means we see, that means we see only one face of the moon, Mars. Mars is the fourth planet from the sun. And the, and the planet we will go on next. First planet, of course, second planet. Its color is red due to iron oxide in the soil. It's called Mars. The name Mars comes from the Greek god of war because of its bloody color. Of course, its two moons are named after the Greek gods of fear and terror. And, and Mars' temperature is freezing cold. And at, this is because of Mars' thin atmosphere, as in the case of Mercury. Of course, its atmosphere lets heat escape easily. And also because it's very far away from the sun. Mars has valleys. The biggest one, the biggest one is as big as North America from coast to coast. It dwarfs the Grand Canyon, the USA. Now valleys are made are made when liquid water used to run in the past. That's what scientists think. And Mars' poles aren't, aren't red like the rest of it. They're white. Because they are filled with snow. Now, Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. And about 50 years ago, astronomers studying Phobos concluded it was artificial. artificial but that's not true. And of course, scientists think they may be asteroids captured by Mars' gravity. And now there were many unmanned missions, which means that like, they don't carry people to Mars. But only 18 out of 40 of them have been successful so far. And, and humans will land on Mars in 2050. And I really wish to be one of them. Jupiter. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun and, and the biggest planet. Of course, its surface is not liquid water and it's not solid, of course. It's not liquid water and it's not solid. It's liquid metallic hydrogen. Its atmosphere is very thick, but that doesn't mean it's, uh, it's hot. It's cold because, it, because it's uh, far away from the sun. Of course, the atmosphere is the second thickest of all the solar system after the sun. Jupiter has a, a bad smell, like socks that haven't been washed for about a week. 
And this is because of methane in its atmosphere. And Jupiter, its gravity is is huge because of its because of its size. So the bigger the gravity, the bigger the size, the, the stronger the gravity. And Jupiter, and Jupiter has rings, very faint rings. Of course, it takes twenty Earths to span Jupiter's diameter. And the moons. Jupiter's moons, it has at least 70 moons, at least. The biggest one being Ganymede, big enough to, big enough to be called a planet if it orbited Jupiter rather than the sun. Now Jupiter acts as a vacuum cleaner in, in the solar system, protecting Earth from asteroids, meteoroids, and comets. It protects Earth from these asteroids, meteoroids, and comets by swallowing them if they get too close to the Earth. Saturn. Saturn is the sixth planet from the Sun and the second biggest planet. It's so light that in an ocean big enough, it would float. And its atmosphere is thick, but that doesn't, but that also doesn't prevent it from being so cold. And of course, it's um, of course, its surface isn't solid as well. It's liquid hydrogen. And it has storms. Oh, and I forgot to say that Jupiter also has storms. The biggest one being the Great Red Spot. Anyways, Saturn has storms. The biggest one being at the top in the polar hexagon. Of course, the polar hexagon is a hexagon with each side being larger than Earth. And inside this, in the center of this hexagon, lies the polar hurricane, the biggest hurricane of Saturn. But no pattern has been seen at the South Pole. Now Saturn has beautiful rings, many, many, many beautiful rings. And they are and there are two main divisions: the Enki Gap and the Cassini Division. And these are made by shepherd moons which clear the path of Saturn's rings. Of course, Saturn has the most moons in the solar system. 150 of them inside its, inside its rings. 150 moonlets, of course. And more are waiting to be discovered. The biggest moon, Titan, is bigger than the planet Mercury. Uranus. Uranus is the seventh planet from the sun and the third biggest planet. It smells like rotten eggs because of methane and the atmosphere, just like Jupiter. But of course, different quantities of, of methane. And Uranus has 11 rings. The biggest one being the outermost ring, of course. And Uranus has 27 moons. And such as Miranda, Umbriel, and Oberon. And of course, they're named after Shakespeare characters. And Uranus' position is tilted by 98 degrees. This might be because of an asteroid the size of Earth hitting, hitting Uranus when it was young. This could also explain the rings. Of course, the rings were discovered when a star passes past its Uranus' rings and started blinking. Of course, these blinking, this blinking concluded to be the rings. Neptune. Neptune is the last planet from the sun and the fourth biggest. Its temperature is freezing, minus 300 or minus 400 degrees Celsius. Of course, this, this doesn't mean Neptune has a, a thin atmosphere. This is only because this is only because of Neptune being the farthest planet from the sun. And of course Neptune does have a thick atmosphere. And it has storms, many, many, many storms, of course. The biggest one being the Great Dark Spot, which changes shape every few years. And it has 14 known moons. Of course, 
these these moons were discovered at the same time. The dwarf planets. The dwarf planets' names are Pluto, Eris, Haumea, Maki Maki, and Ceres. And their size here is listed from biggest to smallest. Pluto is the biggest. Ceres is the smallest. And and Pluto may have a heart shape on its on its surface. Yeah. It does have a heart shape anyway. The asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt are belts made out of rocks and, and dust and gas that orbits the sun. That orbit the sun. Of course the Kuiper belt has oh, has comets as well. And and both the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt have have dwarf planets. Of course the Kuiper belt holding four and the asteroid belt only one. And and like the majority of the majority of the of the of the asteroid and the Kuiper belt are made out of asteroids and and meteorites. Yeah. The asteroids, meteorites and the earth cloud. Of course the asteroids, meteorites and the earth cloud are leftovers of the solar system. And and of course the asteroids and meteorites are, are found in the Oort Club, Kuiper Belt, and the asteroid belt. The difference between the asteroids and the meteorites is that asteroids are the parent bodies of the meteorites. Comets. Now comets are are icy rocks that orbit the sun. And they develop two tails when they go into orbit. A dust tail and a gas tail. This, of course, comets have two kinds of orbits. Short period comets and long period comets. This one, Comet Halley, is a short period comet. While others, of course, a short period comet takes less than 200 years to orbit the sun. While a long period comet takes about 200 years to millions of years to orbit the sun. This is the comet, this is the asteroid, this is the meteorite. Of course, these are the meteorite's three stages. Of course, the comet has no chance of hitting Earth. It just speeds by. The asteroid has a tiny chance of hitting Earth, but the meteorite has a high chance of hitting Earth. Of course, when the meteorite, when the meteorite passes through the Earth's atmosphere and burns up, it is called a meteor. And if this meteor survives and hits the Earth, it's called a meteorite. This is the heliosphere. Of course, the solar wind emitted from the sun travels through, travels through the heliosphere and slows down at the point we call the termination shock. And this is what we call the heliopause. Of course, the heliopause is where the heliosphere stops. And as the solar system travels across the Milky Way galaxy, it, it develops a place called the bow shock. When it hits, of course, when it hits the inter, when the interstellar wind hits the solar system, the point where the interstellar wind hits it is called the bow shock. This is the same as as a, a ship in the water. The, place where the ship hits the water, the water is, is like pushed aside. Of course, this is the same with the solar system. The interstellar wind is pushed aside by the solar system. That is all. Thank you for listening to, to my presentation.